and welcome back to L10. I'm Fiona Pando. As we begin Turkey term, we have lots of stories lined up for you. But first, some headlines. Big Red Soccer players Paige Gillen, Marcia Ojo, Sanjay Rayner, and Spencer Lee have been selected to the Glenn Mooch Meyernick Senior Soccer Boys and Girls All-Star Teams. Additionally, Boys Varsity Soccer was featured in a recent article in the local newspaper, The Trentonian, about their efforts during the season they lost due to COVID-19. Lawrenceville's newly built Abbott Dining Hall, designed by Voith and McDevish Architects, just received its fifth design award, the 2020 Institute of Classical Architecture and Art Sanford White Award, in the category of Commercial, Civic, and Institutional Architecture. The Sustainability Council has been hard at work creating a new recycling program. Our features team brings you a look inside the work that this environmentally friendly group has done so far. Hi, my name is Marlene uh, Guazian. I'm a fourth former in McClellan and I'm part of the leadership committee on the Sustainability Council. Hi, I'm Allison Haworth and I'm on the Sustainability Council leadership committee and I'm also the Lawrenceville Recycling Student Coordinator. After many years of thinking that our recycling was actually being recycled, um, it actually unfortunately wasn't because of the high contamination rates. We thought this year um, we should like instrument a new program and like actually try to put it through and we started doing that by like doing summer planning and actually having a team so that we could have like backup if anything went wrong. Last year I was the uh, Boys Lower Sustainability Rep and we pioneered the, a prototype of this year's recycling program uh, at Boys Lower, Girls Lower and Hellgate and it was a great success and that's why we decided to expand it this year. So on Wednesdays we do all the pickup for the houses and on Fridays we do all the pickup for the academic buildings. We take all the recycling and condense it and then take it all to the recycling center where it is ready for the recycling company to come pick it up. One of our biggest struggles this year has been uh, getting someone that's super committed in every house that makes sure that the recycling is put outside for us to come pick it up. In the future, we should just try to get somebody that's um, super educated on the issue and hopefully we can continue to spread awareness. Although recycling is a very important program, it doesn't combat the root cause. So I think better ways to be sustainable as like we've seen is just reusing. Although we're producing a lot of waste this year due to COVID, uh, just try your best to help minimize the waste that we're putting in the landfill and um, make the best of what we have. Mr. Liang has now lived in Hamel, Cleve, Woodhall, and at the Hilton Garden Inn. Our specialty team brings you an update on his Lawrenceville career and insight into his future plans as a law school student. And I found out that law school was going online, um, and so I didn't have to be there, and I didn't really have anywhere to go. It seemed to make a lot of sense to stick around and be a part of this community and to be able to help out while attending law school online during the day. More than unexpected, we've said goodbye to him about three times at this point, and um, he just loves us too much. He basically like wither in front of his computer. He experiences the stress that he has imposed on us, and I'm very happy about that. Future plans. Future plans? <laughs> Regarding what? Life. Life? Mm. I'm just trying to survive out here. I don't know. Day by day. Words of wisdom for the class of 2021. I think I would say as you're going off to college, be really open to different experiences and to trying out things that you think you may not be interested in. You never know what path you're gonna head down. And I think that part of college is sort of the discovery process and better understanding what you want. Um, and so some of that only happens if you're willing to take risks and to try new things. No, no. It's good. I feel like I need direction. One of my favorite memories at Lawrenceville are these L10 segments. Right now. Why well, do I feel like this whole clip is gonna be you, not me? It's gonna be not actually me answering the questions, but all these, all these clips about me being confused about this interview process. Yeah, it comes back in the spring. It's unclear if Mr. Liang will be back in the spring. Um, so I guess you'll have to wait and see. Now to more headlines. Fourth former Charlotte Bednar and Allison Haworth competed last Saturday at the East Coast Cross Country Championships. 
Bednar finished the race in second, and Haworth finished the race in 33rd. Fifth former Cherie Hernandez won the high school category of the 2020 Neuroethics Essay Contest with her piece titled, Redefining Justice, Updating Criminal Law to Reflect a New Understanding of the Mind. Her essay is linked on the Lawrenceville website. Congratulations, Cherie. With restrictions on what type of performance Periwig can put on virtually, they have adopted a variety of new opportunities to watch theater online. Our arts team brings you backstage with key players in our recent play reading of the off-Broadway production, Everybody. The rehearsal process uh, for the play Everybody, written by Brandon Jacobs Jenkins, as it was a reading, we had six rehearsals. Technically, it became more five and a half. We spread them out two weeks or so ahead of the reading, and um, each rehearsal was somewhere anywhere from an hour and 15 minutes to two hours. And those blocks of time uh, allowed us to get into character, to talk about the script a bit, and think about its underlying themes and what we're going to be delivering in the coming weeks. I think the biggest limitation that anybody who is a theater goer or theater lover will see when they come to a virtual performance is the interactivity between people, the relationship, or relationships that a play is meant to give off or that actors are meant to explore is limiting because we all know that we're caught in our own little frames. Preparation for everybody was a little bit different because it was online. Um, it was kind of easier just getting to only being able to like read it. It was so much better to like get to know the character a little better without having to like memorize the script. Um, and just working with the castmates was a little bit harder, but it was also kind of just fun just getting to be, each other, be with each other on Zoom. And you all know this, certainly, as we are all become very uh, um, experienced in using Zoom, that when one person speaks and then interrupts somebody else, and then, oh, wait, it's not me, is it you? And that interplay is very, uh, it's very limiting um, in Zoom. We are finding new ways of creating relationship and finding new ways to make the dialogue or the diction really flow. Um, using the limitations as we see them as a creative constraint to make more uh, worthwhile theater going experiences because it's all we got and we're going to make the best of it so i think being in a virtual setting um, one of the big challenges was trying to keep the energy and the pace of the play up um, and i think not having a live audience didn't really affect us that much because there was still that like anticipation of like seeing all of, like the blank screens there there was still that sort of bit of a pressure but i think at the end of the day we all pulled it off really well so i'm proud of us that's all for this week's show as always we welcome your suggestions and if you have a story to tell please let us know by email or dm us on one of our social media platforms from all of us here at L10, thanks for watching, welcome back to a virtual term, and we'll see you next time.